Shweta and I are talking about how sometimes she posts content out there and people people say to her that it's way ahead of the times or it's way advanced from when where they are right now. And the example, Shweta, you were giving, go ahead and if you don't mind summarizing that example again. Sure. So part of my work in HA with some birth work is uh, subconscious repatterning before sex, like preconception in the womb and outside the womb. So parents or parents-to-be get a little bit daunted or any birth worker gets, oh, wow, we can support the baby before sex or before yeah, subconscious you know? repatterning yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's right and and so but but you're what you're saying and generally for all of you watching this i mean i think we all uh those of us who are passionate about a particular field and have studied something a lot we know things that are more quote-unquote esoteric or um out of the mainstream because if it was if it was in the mainstream we a lot of people would already know it but we have studied further than the mainstream and so um, do we, should we be concerned that when we share what, like Shweta, like when you share certain things, we're like, oh, it's so advanced. Here's my perspective on it. So this is true with all content, unique. There are like, there are like two ways to attract the right people, right readers, right viewers, right clients, right, you know, kindred spirits. One way is to be popular. Uh, and then the other way is to be esoteric <laughs> and both ways work. The popular way is much more pleasant. The esoteric way takes a lot more patience, and yet it's a much stronger filter. It's a much finer filter to bring to us the right energy signature um, of ideal client, colleague, kindred spirit, reader, etc. Whereas being popular, and I'm not saying you take only one or the other, because I feel like I do both. Um, I when I when I'm creating stage one content, you know, content that I've never said before, uh, I'm exploring, I'm experimenting. And so some of that stuff is, I guess, in my way, esoteric, where I'm talking about maybe business or marketing or authentic authenticity concepts that people don't usually think about. And so they might be like, they might, my ideal readers or viewers might have a sense of recognition that, ooh, there's some seed there that I appreciate, but it's still kind of farther from where I am right now. Um so they, but they, but the thing is the ideal viewer and ideal reader for you, Shweta, they're not going to leave because they recognize that seed of an energy signature. They reckon there's a resonance there, right? Like you said, there's a, there's a, even though they can't apply it right now, because there's like subconscious repatterning. Wow. That sounds fascinating. And I don't know, I, that's the first, this is the only time I've heard it in the last 10 years. Right? I, I don't talk about this often. So, so, so what I do is when I post stage one content, I will explore and experiment and then some things that are esoteric or things that are, and then I will notice, I'll take a look at the stats later. You've heard me talk about stage one, two, three content, the three stages of content. I'll take a look at the stats later and go, hmm, which of my stage one explorations was more understandable by more of my audience. And then I'll take the, the more understandable ones, the more popular ones, and I'll repeat them over time. So I take, I use both strategies and that's what I recommend for all of you as well. The popular strategies make your content go more viral. You get a larger audience. It's less of a fine filter. Um, but then sometimes you still, at the same time, you sometimes do the popular and you sometimes do the esoteric because the esoteric will get a lot less likes and get a lot, a lot less comments, but it'll be continually planting the seed for the ideal viewer and they'll keep staying with you. The first, you, you bring a bunch of people through uh, to you to do the popular, and then some of those people resonate with the, with the esoteric, which over time, you are educating them on it. The, this may be the first time I'm hearing about subconscious repatterning, but if you keep talking about it every other week, then after three to six months, it's going to be more common language for me. And I might even start talking about that with others, and they'll be like, I've never heard of that before. Where'd you, where'd you get that? And then I'll refer them to you. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, and, and the more you talk about it, of course, the more you'll find the language that can bridge the gap between the esoteric and the popular so that you'll be able to give more examples of how subconscious repatterning is, is felt and experienced and all that stuff. Yeah. So hope this helps.